Hey, 7th and 8th graders. So today we are going to begin our talk about pronouns. Now before I move to the next slide, I want you to think to yourself, what is a pronoun? I think you all know what a pronoun is. What's a pronoun? It's a word that replaces a noun. That's right. Common ones, ones that you know and see and have told me in class when we've talked about pronouns before are his, he, hers, she, it, they, we, us, them, uh, us, them, I, right? All of these common pronouns that you know and you can name off the top of your head. So if we see something like, Miss Shauncey is my teacher. She is from Nebraska, right? As the sentence below says, in the second sentence, she replaces Miss Shauncey. So a pronoun is a word that is used to replace a, a noun. She is used to replace the noun, Miss Shauncey. Now, something that you might not have heard of is antecedent. An antecedent is the word that the pronoun refers to or replaces. So antecedent is just a fancy way of saying the noun a pronoun replaces. So if we think about those last two sentences that we talked about, Miss Shauncey was replaced by she. She was the pronoun that replaced Miss Shauncey. So Miss Shauncey would be the antecedent from those two sentences because the pronoun that replaced Miss Shauncey, she, replaced what noun? Miss Shauncey. And as we said, an antecedent is a word it's the noun that the pronoun replaces. So another example, if I say coffee is a warm drink, it is best in the morning. It is the pronoun that replaces coffee. So coffee is the antecedent from those two sentences. It's important to remember that it is a pronoun. I think sometimes that we, I think sometimes we forget that when we say something like it, we are replacing a noun. Instead of saying coffee, I've said it. That's just an important note as we move through our work on pronouns is to remember that it is a pronoun. It replaces a noun in a sentence that we either don't feel like repeating again, don't want to say again, it would be rambling for us to say again in our writing, something like that. So when we think about pronouns, we know that they can be formed based on person, on who is speaking, based on the gender of the noun it's replacing, whether it's masculine, feminine, or neutral, or based on the number of the noun that we are replacing. It's either singular or plural. So I have a little chart for you and I want you guys to write this in your notebook. So this slide will be up or this slideshow presentation will be in your Google Classroom. And I want you guys to copy this chart down in your notebook. It is going to be very helpful for you guys to have this chart. So if we think about that last slide, it talked about person, number, and gender. And so that's what we're looking at. First, this first column, the up and down, personal pronoun. So first person, the person who is speaking. If I am replacing ma, me, if I am using I or me for a pronoun, it's singular. I'm talking about just one person, just me. But if I said the class, us, or we as a class, I am replacing more than one person. I'm talking about more than one person. I'm talking about our whole class. So it's plural. I'm still the one speaking, but I'm speaking about more than one person. So I use we or us. If I'm doing second person, in the second row right here, we see second person, someone being spoken to. It is just one person being spoken to. It's just you being spoken to. And it's singular, you use you. But if there's more than one person, more than one you being spoken to, you still use you. Second person is a little tricky and a little odd between singular and plural. 
we're going to look through that, it can be hard to differentiate. You have to use your context clues to figure out if it's talking to more than one person or just one person. Third person is someone is being, the noun is being spoken for. He, she, it, him, her, are, common, singular, third person. But plural, it, them, they, more than one person is being spoken for. So let's look at some examples. I must write a report tonight. The pronoun is I, and if we remember from our chart, I is a first person pronoun, and there's just one. So if we set it all together, if we put all of that together, I is a first person singular pronoun. You're going to be using that. You're going to have to say things like that in some examples. So it's really important that you guys are able to say that I is a first person singular pronoun pronoun. Miss Shansi gave us the assignment last week. The pronoun is us, replacing the names of every person in the class. Instead of saying Miss Shansi gave Jake and Kyle and Maddie and Abby and Anna, you, you get my point. Person, though, this is just first person it's I, it's um, me speaking, so it's first person, me speaking though for the whole class, so it's plural. Us is a first person plural pronoun. Miss Shansi is my teacher. She assigns many projects to do. The pronoun in the sentence is she. What is she replacing? Miss Shansi. Number, it's just singular. There's just one Miss Shansi. And it's a female. She is female. What person is it? Third person being spoken for. So she, we would say, is a third person singular feminine pronoun. Third person singular feminine pronoun. Okay. I have a few activities uh, that you guys will do throughout the week as we just get this base introduction. We're going to be learning so much more about pronouns, their work within sentences, their different roles that they can take on within sentences, but I want to make sure that we have a firm grasp and understanding of pronouns as we continue on and as we move forward to learn all about the wonders of what pronouns can do.